Hey, welcome back. Time for five more DM quick tips. Now, these are the tips that I have learned running and playing games over the last 40 years. This is the ninth video of an ongoing series of tips, and I'll go ahead and link the full playlist down in the description below. All right, let's just get into it. Tip number one. You know, while the classic dungeon crawl and Monty Hall campaign can be a fun distraction, sometimes it's fun to complicate your plot a little bit. So tip number one is just to try to find out a different adventure type. You know, just try it out for fun. For example, a good mystery scenario. And of course, on the other side of the coin, if you usually do long plots with lots of twists and turns, it can be fun to just take a bit of a break and do a classic dungeon crawl. Lots of treasures, monsters that don't make any sense at all. Maybe you could even tie it back to your actual campaign, but maybe it's just a one-shot. Tip number two. Sometimes combat can turn into a series of I roll the dice, I hit armor class, I miss armor class, I do this much damage, you roll, you hit, you miss. You know, I can be guilty of this. Instead of just announcing, try to do a bit of role playing as well. Something like, I swing the sword and it collides with the shield and roll the dice, da -da -da, and get through his defense and, da -da 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 -da, and get this much damage for him. Blood splurts. Now, just something to kind of liven it up a little bit. I used to actually play a barbarian who got a lot of mileage out of his limited vocabulary. His own name, Thok, was his battle cry, and he started almost every sentence by announcing his name, Thok! Little things like that can really bring combat to life, you know, because Thok will smash you with his battle axe! Thok takes purple worm slayer! And there are fun stuff like that. So, how do you try to bring your characters and NPCs to life during combat? Do you have any sayings or catchphrases that your characters use? Um, tip number three, though. Along those same lines, do you just go with the box text in the adventure, or do you try to make it your own? I know for myself, I tend to do a bit of both. I do have to caution you, if you are using the box text, at least give it a quick read-through before the adventure starts. Um... This tip is um, kind of a personal one because in a recent adventure, I couldn't figure out a sentence. It was describing a prime room. I had just, for whatever reason, thought that the editor and author had misspelled the word prime. They had spelled it P-R-I-M. And it turns out the word was actually spelled correctly. The word was prim. Just a word I haven't seen in a very long time. So, and this was a bedroom, and not an important prime room after all. So, you know, just kind of give it a quick little read-through, or even, you know, write your own. You know, you know that kind of goes with what your overall plot and your overall campaign is. Uh, tip number four. Have you ever tried to do a fight that was cinematic? By this, I mean, instead of rolling dice right away, have them describe what their characters are doing with their weapons or skill. The more creative they are, the better. And just see how creative everybody can actually be. Uh, you can demonstrate this by having your creatures, they flip over tables to use as partial cover. They run upstairs and they swing from chandeliers. Um, you can then assign advantage or disadvantage based on what your characters are doing. Um, for example, I've often thought that if a character was trying to fight their way up a stairs, they should maybe be a disadvantage because the enemy can more easily defend themselves. Unless, though, if the stair is too steep, in which case the character might have the advantage as they slice at the legs of the enemy because the enemy can't effectively parry. A uh, Tip number five. Along the same lines, have you tried mixing skill rolls in with your combat? For example, if a group is fighting while trying to climb ropes, perhaps on a cliff face? Try a new place like that, huh? If some kind of flying enemy or other enemies with ropes, or maybe they're attacking out a little tiny cave, little tiny arrow slits that the you know the, your players can't just crawl right into, 
You know, they're attacking the characters. Now, these characters might have to make some, I don't know, dexterity checks to shoot or swing their weapons or maybe even to keep crawling. Uh, perhaps they want to try to find themselves a place to wedge them in so they can shoot at those flying creatures or get away from the arrow slits and maybe, you know, prepare some spell that they can cast through that arrow slit hole. You know, or maybe cut some of their enemies' ropes. Somebody wants to climb up really, really fast so they can get above everybody else and start cutting some of the enemies' ropes. You know, all kinds of things that, that your players can kind of come up with there. You know, those might take perception checks. Those might take uh, dexterity, uh, athletics, acrobatics. Uh, you know, wisdom checks. I don't know. You'll you'll kind of play that by ear as you go. But uh, But do have them explain what they're doing. And, you know, and don't be afraid to set the DC high if the outcome is really unlikely or impossible. Like, my character is going to develop the ability to fly I'm in, in this scenario, and that's not going to happen. We're not even going to roll the dice for that. But um, if they insist, say, yeah, the DC is one million, go for it. So, anyway, that's kind of a little joke there. But bonus tip, uh, to wrap up this segment, I think a fun bonus tip is try having the PCs just describe what their characters are seeing. You know, you give your brief description, and then just say, what are the ki- what do your guys see? You know, you're on this boat ride. You're going down this boat ride. It's kind of boring. You know, you're not saying it's boring. There's a you can say... There's the trees on the one side. There's, you know, kind of an open grass fields on the other side where there's these farms and whatnot. Um, go ahead. Tell me what uh, your character thinks of this or what is your character doing. And, you know, oftentimes maybe they'll come up with not much of anything. Other times you might have a wizard who's sitting back and uh, chilling his drink. He's on his sitting on a deck chair. He's got his little... his. Uh, um, cocktail out, and he's uh, using a cantrip to just uh, keep it in a nice, cool temperature while a, he has another cantrip where he's fanning himself with some leaves that he collected from one of the trees. Now, you might be surprised what some of the characters will come up with or the players will come up with, and that kind of really adds a lot of flavor into your game. And you might even use those descriptions to guide the story. Of course, this works better with some groups than others. Some groups won't like that at all. You have to judge your players, and if they don't like it, then obviously don't do it again. All right, well, thanks for taking a look. What quick tips would you add? And please let me know down in the comments below. I appreciate all comments. Catch you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.